Okay, so in this problem, we have to find the intervals where this function is concave up and concave down. So to do that, we have to first go straight to the second derivative and set it equal to zero. So step one in this process is to solve this equation. So the second derivative, and then that's equal to zero. So we have to solve for this. Also, uh, if there's any asymptotes or anything funny or any domain issues, we want to make note of that in this step as well. All right, so let's go ahead and start by taking the derivative. So f prime of x, this is a pretty easy derivative. Here you just use the power rule to bring down the four. So you get four x, and then you subtract one. So four minus one is three. Same thing here. So three times three is gonna give us nine. Then you subtract one from the x. So three minus one is two. So now we have to do it again because we want the second derivative. So f double prime of x is equal to, let's see, so 3 times 4, that would be 12. We subtract 1, so 3 minus 1 is 2. And here we go, looks like uh, minus 18 x, right? Subtracting 1, so you get 1. All right, there's no domain issues. There's no vertical asymptotes in the original question. Um, so now we just set it equal to 0, and we try to solve for x. So looks like we can pull out, um, I think a six X, yeah. So let's see, let me rewrite it. F double prime of X equals six X. Yeah, cause six goes into 12 two times. So that will give us two X and it goes into 18 three times. So minus three and this is equal to zero. All right, we have a product equal to zero so we can set each factor equal to zero. So six X equals zero or two X minus three equals zero. Divide by six, so it's gonna give us X equals zero. So this doesn't really have a name, this number. It's, it's kind of like a critical number, but it's not, right? Critical numbers come from the first derivative. These are coming from the second derivative, so I'm not sure if these actually have names. Uh, we can add a three, so two X equals three, and then divide by two. So we have two possible points of interest. That's what I call these. These are places uh, where the concavity uh, might change. So the second step is to take these numbers and put them on a number line. So step two, we're going to make what's called a sine diagram. So make a sine diagram for f double prime. That's the name uh, that it's often given. Let me a different color here. So we draw a little number line and we plot our answers from step one. So zero and three halves. And again, if there's any domain issues, we plot those as well. Now I keep saying that, but there's no example here uh, where there's domain issues. Say for example, that the original question had been f of x equals three x over x plus two. In this case, a domain issue would be negative two, right? Because negative two would make the denominator uh, zero. It would make this function undefined. So you would plot the negative two as well because this is an asymptote. So it's a place where in theory, the concavity could change. All right, but in this problem, we just had these two numbers. So we're there. So now you pick test points and you plug them into the second derivative. That's the reason I rewrote F double prime uh, so many times, you know, a lot of times uh, you wouldn't write it, you would just set this equal to zero and you wouldn't uh, keep writing it. I wrote it over and over again because now we're going to use this. I want to preserve this piece and keep it nice and pretty. So let's pick a test point. We can pick any number we like over here. So how about negative one? So f prime of negative one is equal to six. Uh, whoop, f double prime of negative one is equal to six times negative one two times negative one minus three. This will be, let's see, negative six, and then negative two minus three is negative five. This is a positive 30. This is positive. So whenever the second derivative is positive, it's concave up. So I'm gonna do this, that's concave up. So positive second derivative, concave up, negative second derivative, concave down. Now we do the same thing, we just pick a number over here. How about one? You can pick any number you like. So I'm picking easy numbers. So this is six times one. This will be two times one, 
minus 3. So it'll be uh, 6 times negative 1. So that's negative 6. So that's less than 0. So here it'll be concave down. Right? Concave down. And one more, a number bigger than 3 halves. Uh, well, let's see, 3 halves is 1.5. So how about 2? So f double prime of 2. So 6 times 2. And then 2 times 2 minus 3. This will be uh, 12. 4 minus 3 is 1. So this is just 12. That's positive, so it's concave up. All right, so now we have the answers. Let's see, so it's going to be concave up. The question wanted the intervals, so I'm going to write them separately. So it'll be negative infinity to 0. That's, that's our first interval. And the other one would be um, 3 halves to uh, infinity. So that would be where it's concave up straight from the picture, right? So here, negative infinity to 0. And then here, 3 halves to infinity. And then concave down. Let's see, concave down will be here in the middle, right? So 0, 0 to uh, 3 halves. And that would be the answer. So a really quick recap of, of the steps. Uh, it's all about the steps in these problems. This one happens to be like a really easy one in comparison to many of the other problems that you study in calculus. So what makes it easier or hard is the derivative. This is a really easy derivative. So you just take the derivative twice. Uh, there's no division by 0. There's no square roots. You don't have to worry about those things. Set it equal to 0. We solve. We got two numbers, 0 and 3 halves. Then you take these and you put them on a number line. This is called a sign diagram for the second derivative. Then you just pick test points. Um, you pick one over here on the left. You plug it into the second derivative. It was positive, so it's concave up. We picked one here in the middle. Plug it into the second derivative. It was negative, so it's concave down. We picked one here. Uh, we picked two that was positive, so it's concave up. So it'll be concave up from negative infinity to 0 and also from uh, 3 halves to infinity and concave down from 0 to 3 halves. These points right here, well, this x value here, 0, and this x value here, 3 halves. So the point on the graph where the concavity changes is called an inflection point. So we actually have two inflection points in this problem, one at 0 and one at 3 halves. However, uh, the original question did not ask for those. If you wanted to find the actual point, you would just take the 0 and you would take the 3 halves and you would plug it back, you'd plug it back into this, into this original function here, and that would give you uh, the inflection point. So I hope this video uh, has been helpful to anyone out there who is learning some calculus. Good luck.